Introduction to Building Geometries into Arrays and Grid Setup. This lecture will start by just describing the concept of what we mean by building geometries into arrays. Then we need to discuss how MATLAB indexes its arrays and why, because it's not necessarily how we would like. After that, we'll finish this with some basic concepts for setting up a grid for numerical computation. Concept of building geometries into arrays. Eventually, we'll get to the point where we are writing rather advanced algorithms. What we're seeing here is the result of a simulation of a wave bouncing off of a triangle and interacting with the triangle. And this was actually a rigorous electromagnetic simulation. Quite interesting, and we can watch this wave move around. Question is, how do we communicate to our numerical algorithm that there's a triangle there? How do we tell it the size, the material properties? How is this done? And that's the concept of building a geometry into an array. Somehow we will have an array which represents the same physical space that the simulation's happening in, and we will populate that array such that we're essentially drawing a picture of the structures that we're simulating. And so in this case, we're simulating a triangle, we might end up with something like that. And to our eyes, that looks rather ugly. And that can lead to some consequences in the simulation. But for the most part, a triangle like this might actually give us good results in the simulation. Now, the techniques we're going to learn, these are not meant for graphics, if that's your only purpose. If your only purpose is to draw some kind of triangle, there's much better techniques for doing that. For example, in MATLAB, there's the fill command. Use that if you're just drawing a triangle. What we are doing is populating an array with shapes like triangles or other things so that we can do numerical computation on them. Yes, we will visualize them to make sure that they're right, but our sole goal is not just simply to draw a picture of a triangle. This would be very silly and a very clumsy way to do that. There's much better ways. How MATLAB indexes arrays and why it does that. Let's remember from linear algebra, the convention that's used to refer to the elements of a matrix. So we're showing a four by four matrix here. So a total of 16 elements. And we write these elements with these two subscripts, M and N. And in this case, M is the row number. That tells us how far down in the matrix we are. And it starts at the top with M equal one, second row is M equal two, then M equals three. And in this case, the last row is M equal four. Of course, if it had 10 rows, we'd have M equal 10 and so on. N is the horizontal position or the column in the matrix. And it starts off with n equals 1, and then n equals 2 and 3, and finally ends with n equals 4. So that comes for linear algebra, and that is the convention for accessing elements in a matrix. MATLAB is an acronym for Matrix Laboratory. MATLAB treats everything as if it is a matrix. Therefore, if we have an array of numbers, MATLAB says, oh, that's not really an array, that's a matrix. And so if we have an array, we're storing it as A, the matrix element A sub M N is accessed as A, and then in parentheses, we'd put M and N. And that looks really nice, especially if this is a matrix, that becomes very intuitive. So in this case, the first argument into the array parentheses is going to be our vertical position in the array and it's going to start at one because MATLAB thinks it's accessing a matrix. The second number we give it really is the horizontal position in that array and that will start at n equals one. Here's the problem with that. If this is an array and not a matrix, this is not how our brains are thinking about this problem. Let's say we have some kind of an array and we have array indices I and J. Uh, at least my brain is thinking of this first argument 
as the horizontal position in the array and starting at zero. And the second parameter as the vertical position in the array starting at j equals zero, kind of like a function of x comma y. That's how our brains think. That's what's most intuitive. And other languages do this. But MATLAB is a matrix laboratory, and the convention for linear algebra is not that. So that's the problem. How we want to think is different than how MATLAB does things. And that's because we're trying to think about arrays now and not yet matrices. Eventually, when we get to matrices, we want to actually think how MATLAB does things. But we're building arrays, and so there's a problem. Now, there's a bunch of solutions to this. This is what I find to work the best. We are going to treat all of our arrays just how we would want to. And we're going to think of this first argument as being the horizontal position. We will let it start at one instead of zero. That's not a fixable thing in MATLAB. And we will think of that second argument as the vertical position in the array. We just have to remember that MATLAB's not thinking that way. And so there's some consequences. And really, the only time these consequences arise is when we're visualizing the arrays, because we'll draw the array, but MATLAB is thinking it's drawing a matrix, and actually everything ends up sort of rotated 90 degrees or transposed. And so when you watch me do things in code, I'll be doing some strange looking things. For example, if I call a, a plot, if I want to plot a 2D function image SC, I'll give it my X axis and my Y axis array. And then here's the 2D array, I want to visualize it, and I'm following it with a dot apostrophe. And this is transposing the data so that we sort of go from a matrix to an array, and when we plot it, then we get the array that we think we have been building. We'll also be using a mesh grid command, and I'm sort of reversing the X and Y in both parts here, and we'll get deeper into that when we talk about the mesh grid command. But really, that's the only two consequences we pay for that. So if we can accept that, everything else in our code becomes intuitive and easy. And I mentioned before, this is not the only solution to this, but it's what I find to be the most straightforward and the least confusing. Grid concepts and setup. So when we talk about the grid, what does the grid need? Well, really the grid is a whole set of information. It's all of the grid parameters, like the physical size of the grid, uh, that's maybe it's two inches by three inches, the numerical size of the grid, that is how many cells wide, how many cells tall, like 200 cells by 300 cells. It's the grid axes that's telling us the position of the cells on the grid. It's the arrays that contain the data. So we'll have an array containing a triangle. So the grid is really all of that. The physical size of the grid, I like to use the parameters big SX and big SY, I guess big S for size. And I really would like it if you kept your variables how I like them, and that just makes it, it's a selfish thing, but it makes it easier for me to troubleshoot your codes. So big SX and big SY in my code is always physical width and then the physical height of the grid. Now in MATLAB, I've written here in the sort of the MATLAB font, SX and SY, but if we're talking about equations on paper, uh, you might see more of a, an italics times Roman S, you know, SX and SY. The numerical size of the grid is how many cells is in our grid. So we'll have a certain number of cells wide and we will have a certain number of cells tall. Again, we here we have the, the courier notation. That's the font in MATLAB. So we might write it this way sometimes. We also have the more symbolic notation if we are writing equations on paper. Since we have a size of the grid, we can't have a half cell or three quarters of a cell. The quantities NX and SY have to be integers. Hopefully that makes sense. Our grid resolution. Well, we take our physical space and we divide it into a series of discrete cells and we're calling these grid cells. So let's go ahead and grab one of those and look at this a little bit more closely. And what we see is that cell has some width and some height. 
In MATLAB, we will call the width of this dx and the height dy. If we're working on paper and equations, we might have a, a delta x and a delta y. So we call those the grid resolution parameters. It's the size of the grid cell. When we set up our grid, we really would like to be dx and dy to be as close as possible. We would like our cells to be squares. We don't have to be real paranoid about this. And in fact, I never have, hardly ever have perfect squares. Um, they're always a little bit rectangular, but this isn't something we need to be too paranoid about. But if we can, let's try to make these grid cells as square as possible. Now our grid parameters have to be related in this manner. If I take the number of grid cells, multiply that by the width of the grid cells, I have to recover the physical width of the grid. If this equation is not being satisfied, something is weird with how we've set up our grid and our simulation probably won't give us a correct result. Same thing for the height of the grid. If we take the number of cells tall our grid is, multiply by the height of our grid cell, we have to recover the physical height of the grid. And on the left is our equations written in the more uh, symbolic type notation. So um, usually when we're setting up our, our code, we will specify the size of the grid right up front in, a, in our dashboard. So we'll specify the physical size and somehow specify the number of cells. Later in the code is typically when our grid resolution dx and dy is calculated. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.